Mr. Vincent, how are you, brother? Were you successful in your co-hosting request? No. <laughs> that was gonna be that was gonna be make or break whether today's space was gonna go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I tagged, uh, I sent it, uh, in, uh, gen chat. I did what I do, which is like start doing something and then like went into the discord and started doing work and then like look back. Cause I oh, look cool. Vince is there. <laughs> but, uh, shit. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Someone turned up. Let's get into it. But, um, yeah, the market, people can just hear this later when they hear the recording, but interesting that the volume's down 7.21%. And like what looks like maybe the start of a little pullback, 0.77%. We're down. I think that's the first time I've seen red in a little bit. Ethereum down 0.74%. Um, BNB, XRP. So pretty much everything's ranging down all the way in the top. Like literally, die. Um, there's nothing outside our ICP. There's nothing, well, I would say like 5% of the tokens in the first, no, even less, maybe, yeah, 5% of the tokens inside the top 50 have actually held position or maybe gone a fraction high, but everything else is red. Um, you, think, you think that uh, liquidity is is slowly pouring over or do you think people are kind of holding on to liquidity with this pullback to deploy it into these... Uh, blue chips again i think everyone just took profits everyone just took profits after a week or whatever and it just pumped up and a whole lot of liquidity went in everyone just took profits and took money off off the table and just had a big win yeah yeah see, uh, yeah 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 USDT is yeah, it's dry. So, yeah. So people are pulling some liquidity. Hmm. Yeah. So okay. I mean, people take profits. They'll pull money out. Now the prices are gonna. You know, this is this. This is can. I mean, it's continual cyber movement. But I think it just broke through that. You know that resistance line of whatever it was like it was in the thirties. You know, it broke the magical forty. And then when it's like, fuck, when it hits 50, when it hits 60, then it's like super bullish. I reckon hundreds just a fucking blow off top. Well, the thing is, too, is is if you even 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 though there's been a pullback, we're still putting in higher lows on Bitcoin. Uh, we're holding we're holding that 43 to like high 43, 44 price range. Volume is dropped. RSI is resetting, but the price is staying right about where it's at. So that's actually a good sign. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think it's really predictable. You, it never just goes like all the way up. Generally, it's just like goes up and cycles up and down. But then it does have that blow off top where it'll just like leap and bound in a big way. And that's when you like need to be ready to fucking pull your money out because it's about to dump. Speaking, at any of, dump. Speaking of dumps, I'll be right back. <laughs> um, all right. So interesting. Uh, we uh, were you able to validate? the transactions it probably took you a little while to do that on your form for tai i have not started too busy doing other um requirements but yeah yeah it's like literally number two on my to-do list um which is i used to go on and yeah get get the uh dow wallet as well as the my personal shit as well sorted yeah um most of us uh, on the have validated the transactions submitted the mm -hmm. form so far i have not seen any feedback of anybody missing anything so that's a good sign mm -hmm. um, we'll see what happens with uh monday coming around it's exciting right 
Uh, I think so. I, I think it's a, a, a there's a there's a sense of optimism. I but I think most everybody is kind of like not willing to be too excited about it because mm-hmm. if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You've already uh, emotionally disassociated with it. You know, it's like okay, well, it, it's gone. Well, if I get it back, like holy fuck, that's even better. You know, but. You know, I think the sentiment has uh, pretty much, you know, dwindled out the energy, you know. Um, I haven't even spent any time inside their Discord to even see what the sentiment is like. But you remember prior to this, man, that Discord was 24-7 popping off. And now it's, I haven't checked it lately, but it severely died off. So... Yeah, but it's it's relocated, bro. Yeah, it's reignited, you think? No, no, it's relocated. Relocated? Yeah. Oh, do they have a new a new Discord with a new rebranding? Well, not officially, but when you have a look at what's actually happening, um UA3 have a syndicate, which is essentially a pool. And they're running their they're running their syndicate. They're earning around about fifteen percent per week. The floor of their NFT went from maybe 0.2 to six ETH. So yeah, that's that's where everything's running. Is okay. UA three? Okay. Well, that would make sense then. So mm. eventually, that Discord is probably just going to shut down and it'll go away. Well, uh, having spoken to some of my Founder contacts, I know that syndicates being arranged and syndicates are essentially the new name for like project pools. And so this whole meta of fucking having to own shit to come back in is going to come back in. Mm. And um, it's going to be all these partner projects will be there. And But UA3 will be there. I, I just have a feeling like if I was buying that asset and I had UA3 and my floors just gone to 60th, I'm probably just going to bring it all into centralize it into my server good my server more pop more hype it's a it's a merger it's a takeover mm-hmm. yeah yeah so that's i mean i don't have verification of this factually but i'm using my um my brain to figure out what's going to happen try and predict what's going to happen yeah that's what i think well on a side note i think i landed myself a nice little gift today well, you got to um, – I didn't know you could catch herpes twice. <laughs> uh, Before once you had it, you had it for life. I was asking for help, not hep. <laughs> uh, no, Gary Gary went and uh, snagged himself a couple more, and I couldn't let him outdo me. So he bought two. I bought three, snagged a ledge. Oh, you're kidding me. What is it? I, I can't it yeah, I can't see it as of yet. It hasn't revealed. So oh. but and we couldn't tell until we could see the traits. So um Okay. Well, I think I have to update and <laughs> bait some shit for the boys. So I think that yeah, once I update the smart contract. Mm-hmm. Um Actually, let me do that now. I was, I was literally just about to kick into this trade AI shit, but I'll log back into the other wallet and I'll do your shit first. So everyone can see their legendaries. Ooh. We'll do it right now. Go into the smart contract, reset the uh, URI. Because Rich, um, yeah, there was a problem with it. Rich recreated it. Okay. Do it live right now on air. Nice. Um, Hey, that's what that's how we get we get shit done, right? That's fucking yeah. See problem, fix problem. <laughs> so there's a there's an old quote that I really liked. He who solves the most problems makes the most money. It's true. Then you take that that um take that to the next level and it's like he who systematizes the fixing of problems 
mm. um, makes the most money, right? And now, now the next level is he who automates the fixing of the problems makes the most money. <laughs> That's the uh, the time we live in, right? Where the automation and Man, I'm. Mean, that's why it's like we. You gotta get some upskilling. You know, I I see this uh, economy changing. Uh, I was talking to some guys last night, and and some folks are you know losing their jobs and things like that. So that shit's happening, man. Um, I think we're about to see some jobs go away. Um. Probably because we don't even have enough people, uh, you know, with this conspiracy of basically killing people off with this, you know, vax thing. Uh, We may not even have enough employees to even work these jobs anymore. So uh, moving to automation is going to be an important key thing. Yeah, yeah, because we certainly wouldn't want the... um... What do they? What do they call it? The uh, the useless eaters wasting all the food. <laughs> you know, if they're not going to actually produce anything, like if they were just wanted to get into being artistic and talking about philosophy and life and hanging out and doing fuck all, smoking weed, having a good time, drinking whiskey, shooting weapons, that wouldn't be good. Can't have those. Um, can't have those useless eaters just enjoying themselves. Um, the the conspiracy is the conspiracy is labeling the conspiracy theorists. That's the conspiracy. Hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. I see. Uh, killer Cadogan. Cadogan. Killer Cadogan. I think it's Cadogan. Killer, what's up? You just got to press the uh, unmute button down there in the bottom left so you can speak. (laughs) I saw it flash off for a second. If you're speaking, we cannot hear you. We'll give you a few minutes to uh, see if you can sort it out. You may you may want to drop out and then come back in. That may solve it as well. Sometimes Twatter has some issues. I mean X. Yeah, I see you in mute, but I don't hear anything. Yeah. So, yeah, the market uh, is looking a little flat right now which is kind of good. That's an accumulation zone. We're looking for Bitcoin to make its next move, decide which way in the market it's going to go. And then obviously everything else will follow. I know I'm looking for another leg up on Bitcoin to be able to pull some profits. Roll that over into some other small cap coins. Then pull some more profits. Rinse and repeat. All right, Killer, I'm going to shoot you another request here. I invite you to speak. See if it works. Sounds like, a, uh, sounds like a pretty good plan to me, Vince. Sniping. Sniper trading, following those, getting those indicators. Then it's like getting the hive mind, like getting in that investor channel and getting as many guys qualified on that sniping uh, indicators and, and making fucking, you know, so the whole yeah. idea of two people smarter than one, three people smarter than two, four people smarter than fucking one. You, you, like the more people you can have talking about it and then like you get a, a, essentially a mean average or a median of like what everyone's saying and talking about, Oh, you just get smarter and you get better information than trying to fucking sit there and like do it by yourself. Yeah, um, you know, and that's the – the benefit of having some of us that are, you know, been in the market a little while. I will, I will 
gladly admit I am by no means any type of expert um, when it comes to that. I think the market makers are going to do what they're going to do. All we can do is try to make the best uh, informed decisions that we can. And by doing that, like, you know, having Crypto Sensei come in and talk about all the projects that he's got his team on. Um, obviously, if you want good information, it's you're going to either have to do it yourself and spend the time and energy doing it, or you get in with the right groups that are already doing it and providing that. Um, I'm actually going to pull up my one of the projects uh that he recommended quite a while ago and i know a couple of us have have got um uh, bought into it i know leo is making a killing on it right now because he bought it at like the absolute rock bottom which is you know great timing let's see if i pull this open take a look at biofi and some of my entries, I'm up 422%, 332%, 285%, 196%. And those are the those are the best percentages on the entries that I have into BioFi. <laughs> and it looks like it's gonna run some more. Fucking incredible. Oh yeah. Where's that um listed? BioFi is on the AVAX chain, so you just go to you can grab it on uh, Trader Joe. I also have it staked, so it's earning interest as well. So he he's found some great projects early on that they've invested in. Um he also uses another thing called token metrics. And I just watched a video that Token Metrics put out some of their top 15 tokens going into this next bull run that are small cap coins. Token Metrics uses their uh, AI generated system along with, you know, clumping it together with some of their, uh, you know, TA and market sentiment. You know, there's a lot of factors that kind of pulls in and they grade some of these cryptos, looking at the tech behind it, the team's uh, problems it's solving and then scoring it. Um, and so uh, I was watching a video on some of those and and man, they're they're looking for some of those to 10, 20, 50, 100 X on some of those based on their research models. Yeah, I um actually have subscribed to Token Metrics in twenty seventeen. Yeah, I, I did use that product. Um I think products like that and then also products like the I think the product to get is the Larson line. I think within the community we should actually invest in these products and then be like essentially screenshotting the calls and then pushing them into the investor chat. I, I think mm -hmm. that would be a really good idea. Yeah, uh, we should get the last in line tool, and it's essentially swing trading because, like, if you have a look at this shit, like, once you understand the fundamentals, and then like the fundamentals are good of a project, it's like okay, that's cool, and then you've got to go okay, when is it on trend, and that's the next step. So okay, yeah, Avax, Avax Gaming's on trend, or like this shit's on trend, yeah, and then you have to take that box, and then you've got to go. Um, swing trading where you understand the amount of volume coming in and out on that particular pair of whether it's overbought or oversold and all of that shit has to be run through like APIs and Glassnode and like essentially reading the blockchain so that you can then see your entry points and exit points and that's what the Larson line is and mm. um, yeah yeah and his shit it's like a super easy model there's heaps of pairs and essentially, it just flips blue and yellow. And it's this guy, he's a Swedish guy. Like, if you go and have a look at CTO Larson on um, YouTube, I've been in the cycle for two cycles and I've seen all of these YouTube cunts. And they are cunts, trust me. I've seen all of them do their shit. And literally, out of all of them, and I'm, I'm including like crypto banter, bit boy, fucking 
um, Coin Bureau, all of that. Coin, it's probably like Coin Bureau, uh, Token Metrics, and CTO Larson are like probably like the three best, and they've all got really good fucking tools that I think we should get. Alex Becker just consistently makes the right calls. Mm-hmm. Provided you like watch his shit early and follow his calls, he just yeah. Every time he, he's put out a video, that shit pumps when he makes a call. Exactly because he's the thing is like, and now he started to be more transparent about it. He's the guy fucking backing them. Like he's on the board. He's providing the liquidity. He's the one market making. He's pumping the token. Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's what he's like saying when you're reading between the lines. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason he can have such high conviction, in my opinion. You know, and this is just me speculating, doing my analysis. And like, you're right. Every time he says something, it comes right. Okay. He's a veteran as well. He's like, he was like the nut. He's on the. If we had our fucking Al Qaeda terrorist fucking list of like of a pack of cards, he's like in the top <laughs> top three, you know. But we want to get on to endorse our project, so I think we definitely want to get Neo Tokyo asset for our community at some stage as well. Get these tools. Is it doesn't isn't Neo Tokyo though itself in kind of like a a conglomerate of gaming projects that come together under like one umbrella kind of thing? I'm not super familiar with it, so it's like a network. It's basically the uh, the the preeminent um, RV point. And for VC, for conversation, for industry uh, influences of uh, crypto gaming, all congregate in that project. Mm. It's a it's a networking group. It's an alpha group. It's a it's a uh, yeah. It's a tech group, and all of the main AAA um, gaming. Net communities and like founders are in there, so they all own the NFTs. And then it's Becker, and he's like picking the best projects, and they have like VC presentations and with different fucking shit. And you can, yeah, so that's what his shit's all about. He's like a crypto gaming specialist. So he's it's almost like being in the boardroom with him, basically making decisions in the boardroom of, hey, this project is building and solving this, and then that's gonna, you know, it's gonna prove well. And that particular blockchain uh, IPO, uh, basically uh, early access, yes, to some of these projects. Well, once again, I'm just speaking from what I hear. Mm -hmm. I haven't experienced it. I don't actually know what the experience is like of being inside that community. Mm -hmm. So this is what I hear. But um, I, I can only assume, like, and that he talks about it openly in his fucking video. So. I can only imagine it's like any other Discord community where you go and you verify your NFT and you got channels and you can fucking go and talk to people, right? That's the whole point of it. Yeah, token gated. Mm. So we got the world's best fucking market updates where people can learn how to make money, the right tools they should use, the right people to follow. Um, and we've got the world's worst, most poorly attended fucking um, Zen and mining space in the history of Zen and mining spaces. But then we're giving away the information for free. So fuck everybody. There you go, guys. Problem solved. Um, just take that information for the next bull run. You're sorted. Get those tools. Follow them. Listen to Becca. Switch off from all these other cunts. Um, Five to ten extra bags, and uh, we'll see you at the end of 2025 at the uh, Dogface Convention in uh, Bahamas. Hell yeah. <laughs> so so what are your thoughts on this being uh, a little longer of a bull run this particular cycle, do you think? I, and I've, I've heard some folks talk about it being a, a longer. And, and even I think the hit when I was listening to – 
Uh, I think it was the token metrics guy that was talking about it. Historically, it's starting to lengthen out the length of the bull run. Um, it might have been another another guy that I follow that is pretty solid. He's dude, he's really solid on his TA and his calls. Um, but he was talking about this aspect of it lengthening out this bull run, and there being so much opportunity coming up in this next year to really make a, a really good bag um, of profits, uh, especially if you're looking at, you know, what these trending tokens are, what the trending space is, but knowing and seeing and recognizing the right times to, to buy in the cycle. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, well, what you're saying there, Specifically to like uh, the duration of the, of the bull runs, right? So let's. I've I've brought it up on ChatGPT because I I'm now getting away from just trying to speculate and say shit. I'm, I'm now like, well, we've got this really fucking powerful brain here. Let's just use it. Uh, not mine. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Chat, I mean ChatGPT. Um, <laughs> approximately two to three months was uh, 2011, 60 to 90 days, right? 2013 bull run for three to four months, 90 to 120 days. This is approximate, depending on when you when you count the start and the end, but it's it's fairly close. Mm -hmm. Then they had a second run within the 2013 bull run, which went for like another 90 days. So we're looking at about five months. So we went three months, then it went five months. Then the 2017 bull run started early, 2017 ended. It was around close to a year. So we've gone three months. And we've gone five months and we've got a year. But then the 2021-22 bull run was only half a year. Mm. So I think we're, we're definitely uh, seeing that macroeconomics make a massive difference. Mm -hmm. Like that was the start of the Russia war. Um, that was like then when fucking interest rates have got put up, cost of living, inflation, all of that shit. So it doesn't it, like to me, it's what's happening is going, OK, the question is, w is there money for motherfuckers to get in and play crypto? Right. That's essentially the question. Like, Is there enough money to be driven in from everyday people as well as uh, like the, the massive like. I guess you'd call corporate or family officers or fucking funds or whatever. Is there enough of that money to drive in to create a, a really huge bull run for a long time? I think when well, you look at 2021, it was like they printed a shit ton of money. So that was like what was behind that. I can't really see that coming here. I do think it will track up, but, there's really, we're really at the beck and call of macroeconomics at the moment, depending on what happens in Israel. Like if that escalates and then like Iran get involved or if Turkey got involved, which is like realistic. And then all that's going to do is it's like a, I, I'm now saying there's like a big um, game of fucking like risk, that board game where they're just like using all these shit and moving everything around to get resources. That's literally what all these uh, elitist globalist cunts do. They just treat humans like little little markers on a fucking board of oil. risk, literally, because then they, it's just going to be about oil over in fucking um, the Middle East, and that will determine how expensive is oil. Therefore, how, how how expensive is it to get shit made? Then how expensive is it to drive around, transport everything, logistics, fucking tankers moving everything around the world, and everything's going to stay expensive. So I think there's like quite a lot of potential for it to just be like a, a like a slow drawn out bull run if it's like that. But um, because I think the average everyday man is is maybe like not as cashed up as they need to be to take advantage of this um, this impending market cycle. Like when you think about it, a lot of people like are, are still like not doing great. Mm -hmm. But so therefore, and this is the end of my like my fucking maybe my thesis and the way I'm thinking. Therefore, it's really dependent on whether we're going to see this this ETF and the big. Uh, tradfi money come in 
Like, is that money going to come in? So that, to me, is the determining question about whether we're going to see, like, a big pump and a blow-off top at 100K. Like, that, to me, that is, like, the determining thing. And when I look at that, I go, and this is me going, looking at it and going, what's going on? I think, yeah, I, I do think they will because I think they now understand and they can look at it and go, this is probably our last chance to do that and be early enough to get a significant chunk. Mm -hmm. You know, because micro strategy have like come in, they're just continuing to buy. We're seeing family offices come in, pension funds. So I think once sentiment turns fully and we break through like 50 and then, uh, then I mean, we're like, everyone's buying the rumor on the ETF and then we're going to see selling of the news when that shit goes off. And, once money's fine, I think so. The halving, all of that. But, yeah, my prediction is, yeah, it would be a, like a longer, more drawn-out uh, bull run. I don't think anyone can predict the price, but based on, like, how much it multiplied in the previous three cycles and then looking at this cycle, like a, even a smaller multiplier on what it did in the previous cycles, is going to see it go to like 150k. So I'm and looking at a, I'm looking at a, somewhere in 100 to 150. I don't think is like a crazy analysis. No, I don't think so either. I think what I'm trying to recall what the even this stock to flow indicator was saying that its potential could be right because that's that stock to flow indicator has been pretty spot on. I think most of the time, hasn't it? Have you looked at that? Yeah, I think it was till it wasn't. Um, I'm pretty sure stock to flow got a lot of motherfuckers wrecked in, um, in 2021. Pretty sure. I can I can check on check because, like, Willie Woo got wrecked. Um, he got wrecked. Plan B got wrecked. All of those guys got wrecked. They were all calling, like, high, like, mid- mid 100s to 220 they had all of these models and and they all got wrecked celsius got wrecked because they thought it was going way higher heaps of people got wrecked because of it so let me i mean let me check that uh yeah, i might I'm be getting on stock to flow um but i i know plan b shit was all wrong for sure because i was following his shit prodigiously Yeah, I don't think we can. Well, I don't. I don't know. You think with all this, basically the talk of the ETF, uh, instead of seeing like a, do you think we'll see a huge explosion in Bitcoin price after that, or do you think by that time that a lot of it's already kind of been priced in because it's been talked about for so long? I guess we're going to see, man. But I'll, I'll, pin, I'll pin a video, right? I'm just trying to pause this shit. Pause, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> my shitty internet, my shitty non-responsive internet. Um, yeah, I think just got to be careful. No one can predict the price. That's the point. So if you can't predict the price, don't try and fucking uh, rely on some messiah who thinks that they can because they can't <laughs> or like because they're all full of shit and they'll – that's what I've now realized, right? They're all full of shit. No one can predict the top. But, uh, but the blockchain can give you a really, really good indicator of when things have changed and it looks like it's about to fucking change. And then it can confirm it to you as things are changing because the blockchain is real time. So therefore, it's like don't rely on yourself or some prick on the internet or some cunt who got everyone wrecked in 2021. Uh, rely on the blockchain, the tools, the data, the AI, the technology, remove the emotion, get the correct tools. And I think that's the best strategy. But So when I say I think it's going to be 100 to 150, I'm not saying I know that. I'm just saying, uh, uh what are you kind of like forecasting out into the future of what could happen? 
If it gets anywhere within a sniff of 100, it's going to hit a fucking blow off top. I mean, to me, that's just real obvious. 100 is a magical number for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. 100K USD for Bitcoin. It's like, hold on, grab the fucking roller coaster. Like, it's it's going to go keep going, in my opinion. And then it's like, wow, hey, motherfuckers, where, where's a million? And that's when like 100 will be done, and then a million will be the next market that people will be forecasting out to. Dude, can you can you imagine another twelve months or like let's say let's say another twenty four months from now, right? Because we've been we've been mining Bitcoin then for another what like two and a half that'll be like two and a half years, right? To consistently have be mining it. Looking back and going, man, do you remember when we first started mining in Bitcoin was like at like thirty three, you know, twenty seven K and looking back at, at you know what we're earning off of mining rewards in another 12 to 24 months potentially right um obviously after a blow off top it's going to retrace and the whole market will do that but then that's when all coin season is going to go but you know being able to look back and kind of see where we were at because of being in the market for so long when we launched uh, things like that. I, I think it's going to be a great conversation over some uh, dog face whiskey uh, and a cigar. Absolutely, bro. Um, yeah, we're going to have a hell of a good time this forum. We're going to have a lot, a lot of fun hanging out together and, and being prodigiously walk, watching the markets. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And it's just playing that long game, man, for sure. Like, I think we definitely, like, I definitely feel like the next cycle, the conversation is going to be about that like, we would have gone through a cycle. And that's like, if you can play that long game, played that long game with property, play the long game with crypto, even though it's like you do get these potential, you know, like three, five, 100 X gains. I mean, even like if you do go listen to Becker, what if you fucking listen to him? Like, he, it's like calm your farm and like go for like three to five X gains over a cycle and, and lock it in and take your profit. And I think so many people were guilty of that in 2021 was just like wallet watching, not taking enough profits. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like we've, we just got to learn our lesson. Those um, I was building. That's why I wasn't taking profits. I just went on a hodl strategy. It was like, okay, I'm going to have to, I can't like, I don't have the time to analyze these markets. I literally, I'm building. I have to just keep my head down. And the safest strategy for me was to hodl. But I keep, I've said this in spaces, I'm not sacrificing my own bags this, this cycle. I'm going to be keeping eyes on, doing my education. And um, like everybody else, jumping in and fucking, you know, sniping in when appropriate and sniping out and um, learning alongside everybody and, and taking advantage of that. But um, and playing that that fucking long game because, man, yeah. If you get if you get mining is just like a real nice percentage of your allocation and whatever that is. Like obviously we don't tell people what to do with everything and their money, but if you can like a way I see a portfolio is you divide your portfolio out into a percentage, and you have different allocations of different asset classes, right? So you've got. You know, your cash savings in the bank that you need immediately. Then you're going to have a percentage of like, okay, this is my property. I own my home. This is how much equity I've got in that. And then you go, okay, I've got stock exchange and like shares here. Then I've got fucking precious metals. And then I've got investments into crypto, like cryptocurrencies. And then I've got NFT. So you create a percentage. And um, I'm obviously not going to tell any, uh, any of you here like what to do with your percentages because it's your business and I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, particularly in the United States, but all I can do is share like my my views and my philosophy to what I'm doing is I I want a percentage of that allocated across crypto mining, and that's essentially what we provide. Um, as and everyone here, I mean, fuck if you don't know who we are by now, you've been you've been sleepwalking through the fucking bear market if you don't know who fucking Dogface Labs and mining is. Um, where have you been? But uh, anyway, that's my show for today. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I think it's, you know, that's it becomes part of the, the educational process of being in the market for a while, right? Because 
you know, I went through that same scenario of listening to, you know, a, a YouTuber and he was putting out some good information, but you know, the, his whole thing was hodl as the model. Uh, it's fucking a, it's not hodl as the model. It's bullshit. It, you know, you, you hodl till you're in profits and then you need to learn how to take your profits. Because if I had done that when I was, you know, had turned 180 bucks into 1100, I would have been, I would have had more money to then to reinvest into some other things. Now, the hard part is, is as you, you, you kind of talked about is really taking this emotional aspect out of it because you, the market doesn't just continue to go up. It does not move in a linear fashion, right? So we know that you know, mining rewards are going to be the same way. You're going to end up with the price of Bitcoin, you know, going to a potentially its new all time high, you know, blow off top. You need to be able to take your mining profits so that you can turn around and do with them whatever you want. Right. Lock them in, put them into either some other cash flow opportunities, whether that's real estate um some properties maybe you want to put it into more mining uh, you know it's it's learning to take the dollars and continue to compound them in another fashion form that's why i do like even uh proof of stake you know uh staking rewards right because you're just staking and locking it up uh earning interest for supporting the network right and there's some uh, there's some great opportunities out there to do that again it comes back to what we've talked before mark about getting that cash flow process moving um and i tell you that through this bear market it has been you know in the very beginning it's arduous because if you don't have a lot of capital to play with um you got to start somewhere so you got to take those first baby steps getting some money in the market putting it into some place that you can churn that right um, that's why I like to have not only crypto holdings, crypto holdings that are staked, you know, mining rewards that are earning your rewards. It's passive. You're getting passive rewards and then compounding that as much as you possibly can. Because where where are you going to put your money that it's going to grow? You can't put it in the bank and watch it grow. They're paying you shit while they take your money and actually insure it into a, a, an insurance policy where they can make four five six seven eight percent and pay you one percent right they can easily do that to you because they're making money off of your money being insured through them while they turn around and then loan it back out in this quantitative system that just fucks us all because it's fake you go to the bank if enough of us go to the bank there's not going to be enough money in there for us to even pull our cash out so it's a bullshit system but being here in the space early where we are um that we're able to take advantage of this we're still a very small percentage of the of the the space that's in crypto to begin with uh what was the market cap mark was it like 1.6 trillion that we were at the total market cap i think just yesterday i didn't look at it today um i can't remember what if you said it but, um, um, let me grab it. But yeah, yesterday it was 1.62 off the top of my head. It's now 1. Oh, okay. 1.63. So yeah, I think it must be 1.64. It's down 0.44 of a percent, but it still took that, still took that bump of around 0.2 of a trillion. Um, now I, I, you got to, we have, a, there's a lot of crypto currencies out there. You know, I mean, we went from having the majors, you know, to to a couple years having thousands to now we have. Uh, do, are you on Coin Market Cap or Coin Gecko? Does it tell you how many we actually have? Ah, uh, I'm on. But Coin at one point, it was yeah. like twenty thousand different cryptocurrencies or some bullshit like that. So you have a you have a lot more places for liquidity to go to. Now that may change as the U S gets their shit together and finally get some regulatory clearance. You may see some of these cryptocurrencies get fucking squashed and go to zero. But again, like we have this little bump, but that, that liquidity has to be going somewhere. So there's a lot of diversity in the market for it to go. Yeah. I like Michael Saylor's prediction. So 
he looks at like the size of of tradfi how big is tradfi right let's 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 check this out uh in market size of, of money trillions Trade you know trillions. So, so well yeah exactly so what is the figure i'll try and bring this up on on the world's slowest internet here so um so the tradfi market let's have a look at it i mean it's the volume is too like the volume is more than the overall holdings of let's check on chat here because um so anyway because sailor is predicting that it will be um around 10 percent um which is huge right i believe it's somewhere at the moment i believe it's somewhere around one percent so if you're having a look at that this is off the top of my head yeah so the, the global stock market right is a hundred billion that's right 100 trillion correction the global bond market is 130 trillion the foreign exchange market six trillion uh, so we're having a look at all of these other markets. I mean, real estate's just, I mean, tens of trillions, if not hundred trillion. Like there's so much value locked up in um, trade, fi property, derivatives, commodities, mm -hmm. bonds, stocks, all of this area, right? And like, and as all of that gets digitized, it unlocks and then it allows like that volume to move over into fucking cryptocurrencies and Web3. And we're only at 1.62 out of like, I mean, just having a look at the numbers, what, say like 500 trillion. If we go to 10%, let's call it 50 trillion. So a 50x if it went to 10%. Hmm. It's fucking, you know, like, if it, and that, that would see like a fucking massive increase. And that's like a pretty... I guess at the higher end of a uh, amount of, uh, I guess liquidity that come in as as far as a thesis goes, but I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility because you got to think, and this is what people don't fucking get about NFTs, is the NFT whether it's got a piece of art or if it's just a code or an ordinal or a fucking whatever, that is the certificate of title for ownership over a lot of these things. Like there's the currencies that need to move and they do move, but it will be also NFTs and currencies will go hand in hand, like with things like commodities and real world assets. And so it's fucking early. We're extremely early. Right. Yeah. Cause we're just starting to see, I'm noticing even more uh, real estate projects popping up to bring real world assets, you know, onto the blockchain tokenize it you know democratize the investment process into real estate because let's face it not everybody's got you know a hundred grand you know or wants to take out a second mortgage on their house to go invest in a property um you know but some people have you know five hundred dollars to start that process right or a thousand or maybe they got 5k that they want to do that so i i think that yeah, we're we're on the the very embryonic stages, you know, as well. Even though even though I guess you know Bitcoin's been what twenty thirteen, you know, we're still at this point. It's still in its embryonic phase of what its potential is, right? So, yeah, absolutely, these, trilli these trillions start to unlock and finally flow into the blockchain market and crypto. Uh, I I think the you know this you know. I had somebody the other day was like, oh, I thought NFTs were dead. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah, the the bear markets flushed out the bullshit that had no utility. But if you've got utility, if you're problem solving, that's why I think that gaming and then that that ownership over traits and things that you're you're earning in your games is going to be huge. Right. Um, real world assets, real estate crypto mining being able to do democratize these true utilities uh you know I, I do think that gaming and utility is going to be one of the driving factors of this next bull run yeah i think from a front-facing consumer market definitely for sure uh it's definitely going to be gaming um yeah big time i think you're right like when i like just when we we're talking specifically to property there 
Like this is the this is the significant problem. I mean, it's going to help people with less money, I guess, get in. But this is the significant problem that it will solve for property. Is when you have property and like, so I've I've done property and then I've like got equity and then I want to get the next house and and all of that. You're dealing with the banks, and when you're dealing with the banks, I go in, I go have to go through like prove my fucking proof of income. I have to like show my bank statements. I have to do all of this stuff. Then I'm like, they tell me what the interest rate is. I'm locked into a deal. They put like a fucking mortgage over the house, and it's it's like this big official process, right? And it takes like weeks, if not months, to to sort out. And it also whether I get to do it or not is determined by them. Mm-hmm. What what this problem solves is I go go to my property and I have a digitized uh, certificate of title of that property and it's recognized through artificial intelligence that it's worth this much. Mark's got this much on the blockchain. Here's his fucking record of um, ownership of his crypto. We're we're prepared to give him uh, this amount of money and boom, there you go, collateral for the next property and then I can take that and go buy a, a property in Texas uh, on the blockchain without having to deal with banks. This is that's essentially what it overcomes because banks are a real pain in the ass and their rules suck. You know, who are they to say whether I can get money or not? Fuck them. That's what I think. Yeah. I think that dis- decision should be left up to uh surfer dude, you know, what the dude behind the desk with the surfing board, you know, and and just make that decision of whether somebody can have that loan or not. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't 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 put me under that kind of pressure. <laughs> not, not not yet, anyway. <laughs> um, so so fleece. With that said, and and you know, I could almost see a, a spinoff of of the Dow taking and being an essentially uh, almost a uh, a lending platform to some degree uh i mean if you if you're here for a bezos play which i am i've been saying this since the moment i turned up this is bezos fucking amazon play (laughs) if you think on that scale you're definitely going to have your own nft marketplace you're definitely going to have a dex you're definitely going to have an exchange it's like it's like well, now that I meet different founders and people who've got the vision and like all, all brains eventually come to the same conclusion. If you get like a bunch of smart people in the same room, they essentially come to like almost pretty much the same conclusion around the solution. And they all just move in that direction. They like, it's, it's how like projects who you don't even interact with in web three, we all end up at the same conclusions. Oh, we need this because it's like you're solving the same problems. Uh, right. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, you get enough of the the visionaries together with the foresight to see where the market's going, what the, what issues are going to be presenting, get ahead of the development of it, either be first to market or be right after or be in the works – and learn from the mistakes of somebody who else who is first to market, you know, right? And to be able to look at that and make it better. Surfer dude, pipe in, man. Don't put a hand up. Yeah. Just, just jump right in. <laughs> talk right over us. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got a little bit more respect than that, but I appreciate it. Um, yeah, interesting conversation. Uh, I like what you guys are talking about. It's um. I mean, you guys know that I'm I'm big on the and, and the Web three gaming side of things. I I, I literally do not game um, outside of of Web three. Um, I'm here to you know increase um, my value, um, my uh, wealth essentially, and 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 gaming for me and Web three is an opportunity to do that. I used to game a lot when I was younger, but I saw no value in it because there was um, you, you're you're doing a hell of a lot of work for for no return, and um, I'm past the stage of just wanting to have fun with everything. I actually want to create value, and it's really interesting because um, being a, a part of Alluvium, um, 
you know, it's been really interesting paying attention to every step that, that you know, they've been taking as one of the biggest Web3 projects um, for gaming and seeing how they move and manoeuvre and um, create opportunities, not just for the people in Web3, but also in people in Web2. Um, because that's one of the biggest plays that we're all looking for is how can we get mass adoption into this space? It creates, um, because mass adoption essentially means that um, people uh, people that, you know, we're, we're the early adopters of all of this, all, all this technology. So we're the risk takers essentially. And when, and, and I kind of say this with a bit of tongue in cheek, but when all the sheep come in, they've got to feel safe enough that if they're going to enter into a project or something in, in Web3, that they're, they're, they feel safe. They're not going to get scammed. They're not going to get wrecked. And because a lot of us have got wrecked, made all the mistakes, and they can learn from us. But it's been interesting of being a part of Alluvium because, and also I've heard of a lot of other games that are doing the same kind of thing. They're trying to create wallets that are... I think they very much have a, a point of difference from like, let's just say our MetaMask wallet. Um, that is, is essentially a pure degen play. You, you know, you have to download this thing. You have to send your tokens to it, et cetera, et cetera. They're trying to create games so that your, everything you earn within that game goes to that wallet. That is, I think mm, it, it, it's, you have to then take extra steps to be able to transition from there to say your MetaMask wallet. Because I just, I think what, what Alluvium have found is that the, the masses are just not going to feel safe. And so many people are going to get wrecked given them, if you give them a little lick of opportunity to play around with the MetaMask when they have no idea what they're doing. And it's, it's, I don't understand exactly what they're going to be doing yet, but we know that there's going to be a different type of wallet that for gamers. Um, and whether that is game after game after game, each have their own individual wallet that is um, for that game specifically. Um, it wouldn't surprise me because these people have to feel safe and make sure that they're not going to lose everything. Cause we know that one of the, the the largest parts of this bull run that most people are bullish about is gaming. People are saying it literally everywhere that gaming, gaming, gaming is the center focus on all of this. But what people don't realize is how how much hatred the Web two community have for Web three gaming. So they have to feel safe. And if we create a game where they get wrecked and the Web2 community find out about it, holy hell, the, the, the consequences of that are going to um, tarnish Web3 gaming in a, in a way that we can't really, you know, it'll be diabolical. It will be catastrophic for the space. So it has to be done properly and safely. And, and like you guys are talking about with, um, you know, um, creating the you know everyone's trying to find um, the solutions to these problems I, I think it's happening um, and it's a yeah it's a, it's a very cool time to be a part of this and see what these large large projects are doing to create that safety so yeah I, I think what you're what I'm kind of hearing and I think it's kind of almost a, across the board from from gaming to 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 every aspect of the web three space is really how, how do you make this process of onboarding people into the crypto or the gaming space and making it as simple as possible, you know, where either a, they don't even realize that they're using crypto uh, or simplifying it from a, and making it packaged in a way where, 
they're not seeing these crazy walled addresses and things like that, right? To to be able to get this hundred percent easier adoption, right? I think that's kind of where we're at with all that. Yeah, because oh. and, and it's funny, you know, like um in a way, us DGENs are gonna have to kind of, you know, shut our mouths and not take the piss out of these people for wanting that. Even though for us, you know, we're we're seasoned veterans of total degeneracy at its purest form like <laughs> like <laughs> um within crypto but these people are like newborn babies they have not a single clue what to do and they really really need um to- protection and guidance from themselves because um i've read so many cases where they've proven they cannot be trusted with a little bit of money um, and, and a wallet because they will click on all these things and bam, a scammer gets them. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah. happened way, way too much. Mm. But here's, uh, I mean, I totally agree with you, bro, what you just said. Uh, but here's the, I mean, here's the problem as well, um, just to add, and I agree with what you said, but we also had like, I guess what you would consider fucking like trustworthy mainstream custody based products like Celsius, block fi um exchanges FTX. that were meant to be dependable like ftx um who were like i guess who are like these uh highlight uh projects and products that also completely fucked everybody in the ass right so it's it's like yeah the, i think the degen ship for sure is very true and like we're we're operating on the outer edge of crypto which is like this crazy like we're operating in this libertarian wild west environment where it's like literally kill or be killed as far as your your liquidity goes everything's on the table it's like it's like the fucking you know ufc one valley chudo of fucking crypto <laughs> You know, like no holds barred, fucking eye gouging, head butts, knees in the balls, kicks to the head, soccer kicks to the head of fucking crypto. That's what that's what NFTs and Web three is. But if you get through all of that bullshit, then you um you really have the ability to be <laughs> building something pretty incredible. But yeah, um, I think most people are going to onboard through like trusted, I guess I, I'm, I'm like doing the double fucking quotes here, like with my fingers as I'm speaking, trusted, um, you know, fucking onboarding methods of like whatever Binance or, you know, crypto.com and all of that. It's, it's it, to me, it's really up to those guys or whether they can keep their shit together of whether we get the mass adoption. You know, and the Gemini's, the Gemini's of the world, like, because we're on the outer edge and we'll, well, there'll always be a, a degenerate fucking subculture within crypto and we'll continue to do our shit. But we are like, I think we're like the bridge between degeneracy because we've all got this like degenerate fucking kamikaze, um, you know, who dares wins. Uh, like let's fucking have an adrenaline rush type vibe to us who are in Web3, like we like it, but we are the bridge to these people who are like a little bit more fucking normal, smart money, aren't going to do like crazy plays. I think we're, we've all got that in us as well, most of us here, right, because we're all old bastards, most of us, um, you know, apart from well, Sam. I think Sam's there. Sam's young, but he's learning yeah. the way he's, yeah, so you know what I'm saying. But Mark, I th- I think that there's an important factor that uh, that in that that onboarding process, especially for, and this could be this could come into gaming, right? Is fundamentally, you you see some of the 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 laws being uh, implemented now, where banks are banks are now in, at risk of faulting, right? So what their model is going to have to change. And even, even five, six years ago, they were looking at models of, you know, uh, digital, digital assets. Now they, it was just, you know, pie in the sky at the time. But I I think that there's been some, uh, there's been some legislation that allows them to uh, custodian crypto 
uh, holding, uh, I think, it, was it is it with the Basel three or agreement now that they they can have crypto holdings, but it can only be a certain percentage. I, I think that fundamentally you're going to see the banking industry has to change. And I think there's your key factor of trusted sources, right? Because these folks are not going to be, I mean, you, you look at my, at the baby boomers here in the U S they have a shit ton of money. They're not going to go into web three. They're not going to want to have a meta mask. They are not going to want to deal with that shit at all there, but they will, as they've used for 30, 40, 50 years of their life, use the bank to be able to walk into the bank and the bank says, Hey, you know, we've got this, you know, interesting thing here. It's, you know, a, a ledger and you know what, it, it does have some keys on there, but you don't really have to worry about that. Just know that we have your keys backed up for you. If you, you, if you lose this ledger, just come back to us anytime. We'll sit down with you. We'll have another device. We'll put the keys in it and you will have access to all your digital money again. I think that ultimately becomes one of the ways for them to tap into a lot of this liquidity that's locked up uh, with the baby boomers, because that's going to ha- that's how you're going to get people to feel so-called safe uh, in, in being able to rely on being able to just walk into their bank, sit down with somebody and say, hey, um, I, I lost my ledger. How can I get a, how can I get back to my funds? Yeah, it's interesting. Um because one of the things that I, I believe Alluvium's doing is they um, is you well first of all um, I think that everything's done via Immutable X, um, which is a much safer ecosystem than you know just being able to straight up have your stuff in um, in your MetaMask and you click on the wrong thing future many times and you get wrecked. Uh, but they're also going to be implementing like training or ed- sorry, like a, a education sort of thing where you've got to, where, you know, like it's kind of like what Binance does where, when you are going to, I think it's either start an account or whether you're going to be looking at doing um, trading on Binance that they, they, they put you through a little educational course so that you have to do a little bit of learning and then the actual, an actual test to prove that you understand that you, the, the next steps that you're about to take um, are steps that you're under full control of, you're under full knowledge and understanding of what you're about to do so that if you get wrecked, it's on you. And and I, I think that's a really smart thing to do because I think, you know, the amount of people that um, I've heard of that have come into Web3, I've, I've, you know, I've read about their cases or seen their videos and that, and they said that you know they 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 clicked on something and um an, an open sea and and then they you know signed signed their wallet onto it bang got them and and they got scammed and it's like it's just it's you know and, and it's 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 really sad to see but I think that has given way too much power to um you, you know like. People like Elizabeth Warren, oh man, that woman tries to be mental, and um, you, you know, f- it gives her ammunition to say like, oh, everyone's getting scammed and that kind of thing. So, you, in a way, for mass adoption, you've got to kind of take it back to uh, babying these people to um, so that they get it and they understand it because clearly they've proven that they, you give them the, the, their own power and they don't know what to do with it. Well, that's where, like, um, you know, that's where ETF and Grayscale and all of that comes in, right? Because it gives that, I guess, that, um, you know, that enterprise high-level option to invest into crypto. And people will go into into that, I think, um, and pe- people will invest into funds when that comes. But with regards to crypto, I think, um, I, I think perhaps you have far uh, – well, I just have zero faith in humanity. I believe humans are absolutely fucking retarded. I think they always do dumb shit because we're very predictable. We're very greedy. We're very, like, triggered by 
emotions. We're highly susceptible to social engineering. I think pretty much you have to get kicked in the balls in crypto to even be part of it. Um, and once you met, hopefully you just don't get kicked in the balls 10 times. Hopefully you only get kicked in the balls like one or two times. But you're going to get fucking kicked in the balls in crypto unless you want to just go onto like Gemini and get some um, crypto and put it into like a custody like fund or like a VC fund. Like that. That's a, like that's how you get involved and take zero risk, like really minimize your risk. But then you've got or you could always get the risk of like some – fucking greedy billionaire cunt in the background who like rug that whole fucking fund as well right so it's you're fully susceptible to human nature i mean even but i don't have a lot of um faith in humanity around people coming in i think the solutions will come out they'll get better you're right uh surfer dude but people are fucking stupid they are you know um vince am i wrong or am, or am i right uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I think it is, it is this is, is people are ignorant until they choose to educate themselves. Um, and some people will choose to remain ignorant, um, about these things right but even on that Vince even on that Pete you said that right people are so fucking stupid they think they can come in and do something without putting in a little bit of time to educate themselves like that's yeah. most people like they're so fucking stupid they come in and go gung-ho right including like really smart people so like I just like, I know like here we've like everyone here I'm sure has been kicked in the balls and made a mistake Right. I'm sure of that. Everyone probably I have. I'm sure like everyone here and like you go through that, like whether it's a fishing or whether you fucking clicked the link or did something wrong or or got rug pulled in a project. So you didn't do your research. Everyone's been kicked in the balls. I think the time where you don't get kicked in the balls will be like where it's full D uh, where it's fully regulated. And isn't that the whole fucking point of crypto to not like have that situation where everything's controlled by the government. And, and for that reason, you have to accept personal responsibility for your fuck ups. Isn't that the whole fucking point of crypto? No, um, no, my, it's your fault, Mark, that it happened to me. Even though I clicked on that link, it's your fault that I did that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that um, <laughs> one, of, one of the, one of the smartest things that people can do and need to do and must do is they need to start realizing that their government doesn't give a shit about them. Like I think way too many Americans, especially and New Zealanders um, and, and freaking all over the planet, actually, they still think that their government actually gives a shit about them. And, and, the, and they have their best interests at heart. Clearly in the last four to five years or the last four years, especially you've started to realize, no, they don't. And 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 why crypto came about and why it's, it's as strong and as successful as what it is becoming is because a certain group of people have woken up and they've seen the writing on the wall and they've recognised what their government um, is doing to them and to, to, to all people. And this is a way out of that. And I think once people finally start to get their head out of their ass and realise this, and that's going to be no easy undertaking, that's when you'll start to see um, this place flourish, um, you know, crypto flourish even more um, because um, people still think the government can do no wrong. And it's, it's astounding to me. Um, and, but if you, if you go into most spaces or places in general and you, you talk like we're talking right now um, about our government, they will either be silent because they don't know what to say because they trust the government so much or you'll get attacked because they'll be like, no, 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 no. You're wrong. You're wrong. You know that they wouldn't do that. And this is one of my best mates. I was talking about it, you know, all this stuff the other day, and 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 his response was just, I can tell that he still trusts these people and likes. It. And I'm just like, scratch him here, going, dude. Oh, Leave him. Yeah. Leave him, bro. <laughs> yeah. You can't fix stupid, bro. You oh, can't man. fix stupid. Fucking yeah. leave him. 
Um, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, you can't, you definitely can't fix stupid. And it's, I mean, from my experience of getting to know a lot of Americans, maybe I'm meeting all the smart Americans. I don't know any fucking Americans <laughs> who trust the government. I don't know a single American who's going, these guys are doing such a fucking great job. I'm so fucking happy with the, my president. God damn, I love, God bless America and this fucking leadership that we have running our country right now. I, I've, I'm yet to fi- uh, meet an American who will say oh, that. Oh, they you know? haven't done fuck all for us. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I do, I, Mark, though, I wanted, I wanted to bring up a, 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 an interesting point because, you know, there was a big to-do recently, too, with Ledger and their whole – uh, key recovery thing that you you would have to that they wanted to opt in you you have to opt in for it right but you saw a ton of people you know and I understand why they're doing it because they're trying to get people onboarded because people are going to forget their phrase you know uh, their seed phrase and things like that and you know but you have so they're trying to make it easier for people to feel comfortable about onboarding into their product line. But then you have people who have been in the space and like you said, you know, had their balls kicked a couple of times, right. Who are going, uh, yeah, we understand what you're doing, but we don't want you that in our space at all. Right. But they, we want to keep it decentralized, keep these backdoor options out of the system as much as possible. And that was a huge, huge thing there for a little while. I haven't heard much about it lately. It's kind of died down. But, you know, what are your thoughts on that whole, you know, seed phrase recovery process with Ledger that was a big deal? I think if if, uh, somehow, like if Ledger were to share everyone's data or personal information or whatever, right? If they were to share that information or even if they were to have a breach of the information, like either one of those, whether it was intentional, they changed their policy. Hey, look, we're going to KYC everybody to the, to the government or we're going to fucking, sorry guys, we breached all the data. That fucking business will be dead within fucking 24 hours. Um, yeah, so I don't think uh, that will ever happen like uh, in that regard. But to what you're talking about, I think there is going to become smarter solutions around the encryption of passwords, seed phrases, better ways to store them, be able to recover them. And, yeah, I think there will definitely be ways to do that because if you have a look at Bitcoin, I mean, they talk about, what is it, um, what, 90% of it's minted or mined, but 20%, literally 20% of Bitcoin's lost and or locked up. So that it just, I think humans get smarter over time in that regard. Te- sorry, not humans, technology gets smarter over time. Humans are just equally as dumb but in a more modern way. Um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. You you might have to coin that phrase and make a meme coin out of it. Well, yeah, I guess you know we're the we're the smart people in the room here, of course, because we're fucking educating ourselves and we see what's coming. But yeah, the um, I mean, you guys just seen it humans we, we're very we, we're experiential learners you know it's like a little bit to what surfer dude was saying like you won't believe how fucked up the government is until you're experiencing it so you can be like watching it you can be looking at it happening you can be oh that's pretty bad till it's happening to you you pretty much aren't going to do anything because we're humans are just selfish do whatever benefits them generally, like as a, as a fucking species and a race, you know, it's very, whatever's not affecting me, I won't care. So I think, yeah, like Surfer, I think when uh, we start getting this, when the oppression gets to a point where it's affecting more than half the population, then we'll fucking see like some human uprising. Well, I think that that's where, you know, in order to get, people into this system right which is where they want us right we just happen to be here to take advantage of it and have the enough intelligence to take the monetary gain so that we can stay 
on the outer skirts of it, right? But a lot of people who are sleeping, uh, in order to get them onboarded into digital currencies and stuff, they're going to have to, they're, they're going to use that Hegelian dialect, right? They're going to create a problem and then magically come up with a solution, you know, and then be the saviors, right? Um, so uh, that's why I, I, I they're not going to let a crisis, they're going to use a crisis in order to force people to use the methodology, right? Because people aren't just going to go, oh, yeah, this blockchain stuff is pretty cool. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm not really interested in dabbling it. They're going to that. They're going to make you dabble into it by making it easy to 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 get into as far as uh, ease of access, which everybody has a phone nowadays. So you can literally go onto any exchange, you know, register on any exchange, connect your bank, deposit fiat and start trading within minutes. Right. So. But they're going to use some type of an event to instill a lot of fear in order to push people right where they want them to go. And it's playing into their hands. But it, and it's going to happen. That's the only way for them to get everybody, 95% to 98% of everybody, into the system. They've got to create an, a big enough of an issue, instill enough fear in order to get everybody going in that direction, right? you got to steer them like cattle essentially. Very, very true. Very, very true. Um, something I find quite interesting is like when things come into mass adoption and if you have a look at, you know, Microsoft, right? When we all went into Windows, like the mass adoption curve of Windows, it was like, once they achieve 10% of market capture, like essentially every, like 10% of computers in the world were all using Windows and uh, Microsoft Office and all of that shit, then it was just became like a steam train and a steamroller to the point where then it got to like, if everybody recalls, it was like 90, 95 to 98% adoption with like a little bit of fucking Linux and then um, Apple who just got, uh, strategically fucked in the ass because Stephen Jobs wasn't as smart as Bill Gates as a businessman at that time. So that was, I think, um, crypto could potentially be like very much the same. It's like you've got to get to this mass adoption point. But I've said this in the past is like surely in the background at the moment, all of these CBDCs are being, um, you know, discovered built there's a hell of a lot of fucking technical work that needs to go into that in the background so i think at the moment it's just a race they're racing to get these cbdc's created and at the same time they're trying to stem the flow of people moving to crypto because they know that crypto is the decentralized version theirs is the centralized version and they want to halt as many people as they can uh they want to fucking secure as much of the bitcoin for themselves as they can as well so, yeah, the more that we can be in that, I guess, initial 10% that goes. Uh, I mean, this is just my personal thesis. Uh, I'm fucking, you know, that's what I think in my head. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. Fucking you have your own thoughts. But, uh, yeah, what's your thoughts on adoption, gentlemen? I, I would have to concur with a lot of what you're talking about, Mark. I think that they have used FTX, they've used Celsius as prime examples to FUD as many people out, to keep them from, you know, investing. Because, you, know, uh, you know, some people, ah, yeah, I've heard of Bitcoin. I don't really understand how it works, right? They're not going to unless they have somebody that educates them. Um, and until it, you know, like maybe their fiat kicks them in the balls, right, and makes them change, are they going to be forced to do it, right? And then be kind of like, okay, well, now I'm, you know, now I, I don't really need to know that I'm, you know, uh, if I want to buy gold or whatever, instead of it being gold now, it's going to be Bitcoin, you know, or whatever that equivalent is. Um, 
if I'm going to send money to somebody, I, they're not even going to care. They're just going to want to know, hey, I sent money to my buddy. Uh, they're not even going to care that it was even sent on the backs of an XRP ledger or, or a Stellar network, right? They're not going to care about that. But th they're going to get kicked in the ball somehow with their fiat. So I just need to step away for a minute. I am um, I'm not sure what you guys are talking about right now. Mark, do you want to rephrase that? Surfer Du can kind of address that. I'm on my own tangent, but um <laughs> <laughs> I'm already just my brain's off with the fucking fairies fucking thinking about the next thing I'm I'm saying and talking about and I'm I'm emailing <laughs> I'm emailing a fucking mining company in the Dominican Republic and I'm on Chat GPT and Let's go. I got a little bit distracted in that one too, bro. But um, I think we were just talking about mass adoption. Where's this tipping point where we get it on? But also the the conspiracy potentially that essentially like government and um, these big orgs are being sabotaged to like make people like essentially not adopt crypto because like we had these Celsius, FTX, we had these big fucking collapses yeah. while people are fleeing crypto. Then they're coming in and buying it all up before we get to CBDCs. So that sort of conversation is what I was. That, that, that's that's funny to. because that's exactly what I was wanting to. Why I came up and wanted to talk about earlier, and I went away, and you guys are still talking about that. So that's perfect. Yeah, because I um, you know, it's been a look. I I try and dig a little bit deeper into you know, the causes of like FTX and, and Celsius and stuff like that, um, you know, the potential political um, involvement and, you know, the real reasons why these companies have gone down. And it, it sounds like um, on, in every case there was some kind of dirty political um, high-powered sort of um, intervention that has caused these companies to fall like this. And, and it's really um, it's sad and, and, and in a way like scary, but now become predictable why this sort of stuff's going on. And, but the, 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 dumb, the, the dumbest thing is, is that so many people, like even a lot of crypto people don't want to hear it, you know, let alone people outside of crypto. They just, they, they, they don't want to hear the fact that, so you're saying my government had something to do with these large corporations going under. It's like yes, hundred percent, thousand percent, and um, and it's it, it, I think it is all strategic. But you know, I I I have to ask the question then of okay, well if that's their, you know, their intention was to do stuff like this to draw people away from crypto, um, and it's potentially going to lead to a CBDC. And, and, and let's just say these big organizations and stuff like BlackRock and, and the US government and they are buying up all this crypto when it is tanking, then it's, it's, if, we, if they do implement a CBDC, is there going to be any need for um, other crypto to exist at that point? Because... Um, Look, I haven't dug deep enough quite into a CBDC. I understand some of the idea of it, but if, are we going to need other crypto to still exist if they fully roll out a CBDC? I mean, because that's a, sort of a total control play, really, isn't it? Um, uh, they don't have a choice, bro. Like, are you are you going to go use it? Well, as you say, we're not really going to have a choice, but. You know, well, no, no, no. Do, do we have a choice? Oh, because I oh, absolutely. I'll well, I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to use their system. Are you? Yeah, no, no, hell no, no. They can yeah. stick so it. So I, I just no. I, I think that's why it's so important we get as, as far ahead as we can now because uh, the CBDCs will come out, and yeah, like the the masses mm. will probably go there because that's the system. That's where like fiat is headed, but mm. that doesn't mean that they can't they can't do anything about crypto. Like uh, to answer the question, the uh, Vince's question earlier, how many tokens are there? There's 2 million motherfucking tokens. Um, how, how are they going to shut down 200 cryptos? 
sorry, 2 million cryptos. How the fuck do they shut down 2 million cryptos? How do they bring down the entire fucking decentralized uh, nodes of Bitcoin? How do they bring down all those miners? Like, how do they fucking bring down the Ethereum proof of stake model? Like, I, it's just too mm. late. It's fucking done. Like, so th- there's just going to be those operating in this system and those who believe in freedom and financial sovereignty and doing what we're doing. And then there's just going to be everyday Joe Bloggs motherfucker who's still doing like, um, he, th- he thinks he's still in the same system. So he thinks he's just like going and using his FBOS card and shit. And like, it won't even feel any different for that, that fucking person, that sheep. And mm. then they won't even realize they're using a CBDC. Like that, it won't even be anything to them. We'll, it'll just, we'll be the ones that know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think us being early though too, um, and being able to capitalize will help us to not be reliant on the system, right? If you were in fiat and fiat system crashes and they fucking destroy it on purpose, then they come in, they say, Oh, don't worry, we've got you covered. We're gonna send you eight hundred, you know, dollars a month C B D in a CBDC and we will subsidize your income because we realize, you know, things are in the shitter. Right? Mm. But we positioned ourselves way ahead of time to make and potentially enough money to operate without having to be in a position to rely on the CBDC coming in. All right? Mm. That's that's where I feel like they're going to capture those people that are not paying attention. They're not aware. Uh, and to answer your question, I think, in my opinion, I don't think those these private blockchains outside of CBDCs are going to go away because many of them are solving different problems, right? You have... <laughs> You know, Ripple, who's, you know, working with the banks to be able to move large amounts of liquidity between the banks. But you've got XDC, which is for trade fi and um, shipping. And you've got VeChain doing logistics. And I so I think there's there's potentially too many other real utilities and these other private blockchains that have been launched already. They're not they're, they're not going to be able to shut them. The only way for them to shut them down would be to try to create enough regulation that it would make it so difficult for people to use them. And even then, I think they're going to be up for a real big fight because I think that doing that is going to kill the economy to a point where everything would come to a screeching halt. And I could be completely wrong, but I think that that, the the cat's out of the bag by now, as, as Mark was saying. I don't think they're going to be able to stop certain factors of this. They will probably do their damnedest to regulate the shit out of it, but I don't think they're going to be able to stop it, especially when it comes to business and business solutions and things like that. Mm. Yeah, uh, for sure. Interesting points. It's, um, yeah, it's, um, it would certainly help getting um, more people voted in, especially in the US, um, uh, you know, that are pro-crypto, pro-innovation and stuff like that, because I think you've got way too many politicians like um, Elizabeth Warren and that, that are too old and, and just protecting the old guard, you know, like there's, there's, a, there's a new sheriff on the block, you know, and um, he, you know, uh, he needs more support people in support um to be able to help push this stuff through uh it's it's um yeah it's remarkable being seeing the difference um towards crypto from you know the 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 last um uh group that was in control to the the current one you know it's like wow quite what a contrast you know (laughs) so it's um yeah but uh, you know that that's 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 very difficult to do. I mean, yeah, um, I, I, so some some of these people that get into power, I'm just astounded. You know how they how they were ever voted in. You know, like um, <laughs> it, it just ma- it, it, like it, it makes me scratch my head. Going, this person is a literal moron, and they've been voted back into as, as a senator. It's like, what on earth are the people in your region thinking? 
But I, I heard that I heard New Zealand politicians are some of the best in the world, though. So you guys should be doing pretty good over there. <laughs> it's uh, I like your sense of humor, Vincent. <laughs> now we've got some. Look, we've got we've got some um, that are good, but we've just had a big run of eight years of just hell. So, um, oh, look, what do you what do you do when? Um, these people get into, you know, Jacinda, um, who is our prime minister for a long time, you know, she, I guess, in a way, um, relied on the empathy of the country to see how good she'd done during COVID to help manage things. It's like, it was all set up. Like, I'm, I'm more and more certain of that than ever before that this whole thing was just thinking orchestrated. I mean, that's for a whole other topic, but it's, and I appreciated that chat with Jim the other day, um, you, you know, and it's like, but you're dealing with people that are like, my government loves me. It wants to protect me. It's like, no, man. <laughs> yeah. So interesting times. That's for sure. Hey, I just wanted to quickly ask, um, was today the day that you guys are finding out that um, whether you're getting your your funds back from um, Trade AI? Was it the tenth of December? No. Anyone hear me? Yeah, Monday. Oh, is it Monday? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Monday. Sorry, I was <laughs> I, I was answering you without having unmuted my mic, so I, I, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't working real well. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all good. It's uh, <laughs> no worries. It's almost as bad as um, hosting an ex-politician, and and then you, the, you the entire um, tw Twitter space drops out. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, I that was no! terrible timing too. <laughs> I it's the first time I've ever spoken to a politician I think in my life and I just asked them a, a reasonably deep from the heart question and then the whole space rags and I was like what did I fault. what did I say <laughs> 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 did I ask something stupid <laughs> yeah, no I didn't think that but it, it did make me laugh <laughs> yeah oh. but, uh, um All right. Mark, what do you think about that time to start to wrap this space up, you think? Or you you got a couple of touch points you want to touch on as you multitask in the background? Nah, I think we're good, bro. I think we're good. Um, yeah, time to wrap up. Uh, I think a few shout-outs for the the space. Thanks for uh, Surfer Dude coming up and um, fucking, uh, you know, coming and having a chat, bro. It's always good. If uh, one day we'll have a, we'll do a space and I'll give you a debrief of what was going on on my end when that, when that space rugged, you'll fucking laugh your ass off. Uh, Cause I was like, I was in and out of, in and out of VC meetings and I was on Shortland street. Let's just say there was a, an elevator to a venture capital firm and a decision on whether I should go into an elevator or not and rig the space or, or fucking like just, get it going and it was pretty funny but and, and i literally that space after i'd done the initial talking i i was probably listening to nothing after that i don't know what happened in the space and then when it, obviously i noticed it was rugged and then i fucking had the restart and then stabber came in told me that it had restarted over in vince and i was like well fuck jim's like want to go gonna want to come back here because he fucking was going to and I'm messaging him already and I've already sent him the link so I said stab a go to that space tell him to come here and then I literally fucking got in said a little bit of shit and then went straight into the next meeting and uh, <laughs> I've got I've got one of the single most fucking outrageous stories of what happened on that journey when in the part two that we'll discuss uh, perhaps in the next this this is going to make want to make you just fucking die when you hear the story about the, sh the fucking shit I was doing at my end uh, to try and keep that space alive, the second one. But uh, so no, bro, it was certainly nothing to do with what you said. Just fucking uh, life happening in the background, crazy shit, madness of uh, NFT founder life, bro. 
That's cool. And I'd also like to, um, at some stage, uh, hear a bit more from you guys about the new um, uh, uh, at cooling system that you're looking at doing with the um, the mining rigs. That would be cool because I don't know anything about that. So, yeah, that'd be awesome. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah, bro, for sure. Um, that's, I mean, that's all part of why this uh, company, like every day, I just get more and more sure that this will be a billion dollar business and a billion dollar entity, just more and more like not just with what we're doing with my name, but the real world asset dashboard. Um, also like knowing the capability that we've built with AI and some of the strategic um, plays that I'm going to come up to uh, make use of that resource that we have within the team to get guys paid, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, um, Doughface AI agency. Um, so that's a mouthful. Like it's just, it's getting, yeah, it's, it's getting ridiculous, but you only gain that level of IP. And this is essentially the intellectual property. I think someone was talking about just through solving problems and getting, you get closer and closer and closer to the true source of knowledge and truth. And like for fucking crypto mining, that's like, What's the best tech? Well, immersion mining tech's cool, but it's actually hydro cooling is the next stage. And now you know that, well, a lot of people are still stuck in air cooled and they're only just heading to immersion. And it's like, well, yeah, we're in immersion now and we're going to be heading to hydro cooled because that's the next shit. And you just stay ahead of the curve. Um, as far as the technology side of it, uh, our mining team are far more, I would say, like, adept and informed about the technology like my job is to understand the technology conceptually understand what's possible how much it costs what's it going to cost to do it and then what is the financial benefit like if we do that then what is the additional revenue return that we make through having invested into hydro cooling as opposed to immersion as opposed to air cooled so that's that's how my brain thinks it's like that's why it's so powerful is because we have different um divisions and teams within the organization where we go look guys we need to know all about fucking hydro cooling and we've also got this really hard working motherfucker named chat gpt god bless him <laughs> he's a fucking legend he never complains he always turns up he's always on time he's never fucking sick Chat GPT is a fucking legend. Um, give that man a pay rise. But yeah, I think, um, or, or a woman, maybe it's a woman. I don't know. Chat GPT. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I say we wrap. We've gone over time. I'm tired as shit, delirious. I've uh, been having fucking lozenges. And uh, yeah, the more delirious I get, the matter these spaces are going to get. We're just saying outrageous, ridiculous shit, but who cares? <laughs> I love it. I love Let's it. go. Thank you, please. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. Thanks for hearing this banter on for a while. Appreciate it. We covered a lot of actually good stuff, though, too. I, you know, regarding the markets and such. Absolutely. We will come here and talk markets. It's good to, like, you know, it's good to talk about it because essentially you're forming your own thesis, but then you have to qualify that. And it's good to come into conversations and have your thesis challenged. So it'd be really good if people like are listening and nah, I don't believe that, or I heard this, if people would just come up. It's one criticism. One thing I would say about our space is we just need more fucking people coming up and, and offering their opinions and contributing to the hive mind. Cause we're, we're like, two guys or three guys and we need more people to come up and give their opinions. Um, people are doing the courses. Well, start applying some of that shit you got stored in your head to your mouth and verbalize it so that fucking people can learn. Um, you know, like and that's, that's what a real true community does. And we do do a lot of that in the server, of course, but let's get it going here in the spaces. So that's my, that's my challenge to the community. Come on, come up uh, and have a chat if able. And if not, no problem. Uh, but yeah, that's us guys. The UFC's just starting. I've just logged in. Perfect timing. Uh, we might throw it up on the Discord. If you like the UFC, come on through. Um, sponsored by Uncle Dana. 
free on uh, the Discord, fucking Dogface Labs Discord. Thank you, Uncle Dana. We love you. We appreciate you. And um, see you later, everybody. Later. Good night, everybody.